Now the first thing I want you to notice are these. You may know them as mounting brackets, but here at Brooks Audio Design, we like to reinvent the wheel. So they're known as transubstantiation trunnions. They're for mounting to the back of each coffin to keep them on the wall. However, they simply won't be necessary because the sheer bulk of the concrete we install in each coffin will simply rip right through the drywall. The next cutting edge feature is a Kooner Wayne shaft attached to the boggle tacky in the bottom. Now this prevents side fumbling. And do you notice there's a 180 degree rotation in case you maybe might want to play music for the back of your head. At Brooks Audio Design, we like to refer to this as the main hearse. As you can see, it produces deadly frequencies. Now, we do get a lot of flack. We get, we get a lot of, a lot of flack. For the concrete that we put in the speaker. For to the concrete that we put in the speaker. For concrete that we put in the speaker. Flack purpose. Back of your head. For de 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 deadly frequencies. But it serves a very key pivotal purpose. Have you considered what would happen to your home entertainment system in the midst of a natural disaster like an earthquake? Well, these bottom-bound coffins won't topple even in an earthquake. It will take your whole house turning upside down to prevent you from listening to your audio equipment. Next, we get a lot of hazing about why isn't the speaker wire cut? We do that to preserve its freshness. And as a pro tip, since you're getting the inside scoop, is I recommend lathering a bit of cheese inside the cracks, chaining it to the inside of a local dumpster, and let rats gnaw it into neatly partitioned sections. Now, speaking of rat integrity, I can vouch for the dumpsters behind slaughterhouses because those anabolic roughnecks will get the job done quicker than you can feed Bertabot's beans to a grizzly bear. Now that brings me to a really great point. We are a EPA syndicate cooperative, sourcing 72% of our components from local dumpsters, vineyards, and uh, uh, hazardous waste processing facilities. Now, the key word is local because local means reduced impact in terms of work. To illustrate, we minimize the use of essential confabulated didactics. And I, I do want to mention that don't remove the cover. That will definitely void your warranty. We only utilize one woozy mangle pin per speaker mounting it to the coffin because we acknowledge that more moving parts equals better sound. And now onto the Galleon Goliath. Check it. No grill on the womp bottom. And what it do? Be a check it, check it, check it. What it do on the on the womp bottom? Be a womp 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 bottom. Galleon, 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 Goliath, womp bottom surmounted by a prefamulated amulite designed to triple croak a cripple cockroach should it malleate into the main coffin. Perpetual motion. You're Michael Tigler. If you notice, it does require significant force to make any movement. And we've done this for all those with arthritis that want to build back a little wrist strength. Also to anyone out there that wants to learn how to whip up some crap. On the humpback. You see, we have a transcendentally zoned Fissile Script Net incorporating five sets of DO double deltoid type bearings enmeshed into the BBW. Now that's for connections. Yeah. <laughs> now it's time to call the plug. I recommend showing a little gratitude because this baby's what's responsible for siphoning the 2000 watts of power right off of your grid. Now this is the McGonagall pen, essentially a zero compatibility feature. How can I put this? We're never not prepared to already have something finished because at Brooks Audio, we get a lot of people hooked on phonics. The main thing you need to know is that the McGonagall pen, since it doesn't work, we've gone ahead and removed all the wiring to cut down on production costs, meanwhile adding the prong to add a little security in our clients. The pro tip I can recommend is after plugging in, gnawing on the wire a little bit just to make sure it's activated.
Now we have a lot of grizzly men working in our warehouses and it's one of their clever ideas. I can't take the credit for calling this, calling the plug or also railing the line. Cause when you do, you'll need two phones since it'll be ring, ring, ring until you get Betty Crocker or La Familia. Now before you call the plug, you're gonna wanna cut that anywhere really and call the plug. And then you're gonna wanna make an aluminum cackle rope, which you'll use to wrap around the uninsulated wire and then march that out an open window and drive it into the ground about 40 to 80 feet. That'll generate a wave trap, effectively sheltering you from EMFs, alien frequencies, barracudas, and wooks. Pretty self-explanatory, I know, but that should get you pretty well protected. Also, we are BBB accredited, the Bureau of Best Businesses, so we source all of our labor from marshmallow farmers and terrorists.